So in this video, we're going to show you and explain to you what to put inside a workplace first aid kit. Now here in the UK, the health and safety exec, the HSC, they simply state, the contents of your workplace first aid kit should be based on your first aid needs assessment. They also suggest if you are looking into buying a new first aid kit, look for the British Standards 8599 kit. Now by law, your kit doesn't have to meet this standard, but you should check it actually contains what you've identified in your first aid needs assessment. You can add or take out from it if need be. Therefore, a workplace first aid kit must be suitable for your workplace and it should be placed where it's easily accessible by anyone who needs it. Everything inside a first aid kit should also be in date. So somebody should be checking to make sure the expiry dates haven't been exceeded because if they have been, then the manufacturer of that item can't guarantee that that item will be sterile. Now the size of the first aid kit will also depend on your workplace and it also depends on the type of work activities that are undertaken. For example, if I was doing one-to-one -one teaching coaching with somebody, I'm gonna have a small first aid kit. Or if I had a team of six people, I might have a slightly larger one. But if I worked in a big office building with multiple floors, I'll probably have a large first aid kit in every reception area on every floor. But it's up to your workplace to decide what is appropriate for you and your workplace. Now ideally, all workplace first aid kits should be green and they should have a white cross on there so everybody in that workplace knows that that is a workplace first aid kit. It is easily recognisable. Now what I've done is I've taken out all the contents of this uh, workplace first aid kit and this first aid kit actually belongs to a leisure centre and I'm going to repack it and show you what this workplace have decided is suitable for their needs in their setting. So the first thing we're gonna put in there is some disposable ice packs. Now disposable ice packs are great if you don't have a freezer nearby because all you need to do is crack them, they become instantly cold and they'll be commonly used on sprains or head injuries to reduce the swelling. This workplace have also decided to put in um, different size sterile dressings. Now they come in medium, large and small. The medium ones are more, most commonly used um, on body parts such as the arms and lower legs, whereas a larger dressing will be more used for uh, a larger wounds on a leg or on a stomach. And then the smaller ones could be used instead of a plaster for maybe an eye or a finger, or just a small cut. You tend to have more medium sized dressings than you do large and small but it depends on your needs in your workplace as well. And all these sterile dressings are, is a gauze pad with bandage attached to them. So you put pressure on the wound and then secure it into place with the bandage. A pair of scissors is also useful because if you had to remove my clothing when doing CPR, you'd be able to cut my clothing off going away from my face. Or if I'm bleeding from the leg, you might maybe cut my trouser leg off so you can see what's happening with the wound. So a pair of scissors will be useful. Some sort of tape or micropore tape is great for securing bandages into place. A couple of triangular bandages are also useful for people who have suspected fractures in their arm, maybe even a, a sprained wrist, a dislocated shoulder, broken collarbone. Plasters of various different sizes and ideally hypoallergenic plasters are great. Just make sure when you give somebody a plaster or administer a plaster to somebody, you check they're not actually allergic to them because people can be allergic to plasters. If they are, you can always still use a sterile dressing. It doesn't need to be a plaster that's used. You normally have quite a few wipes, sterile solution wipes or alcohol-free wipes that would use to clean a wound. And we have quite a few pairs of gloves, latex-free gloves. We talked about gloves in an earlier video, as well as face shields. In this case, there's two face shields in this first aid kit and six pairs of gloves. And the reason we've got more than one face shield is not because necessarily we're anticipating more than one casualty is going to stop breathing, but if I had a helper and we need to do CPR to a casualty, 
I'll be taking it in turns and the other helper is going to need to protect themselves from the casualty. They don't want to be sharing my face shield. So two is always advised then as well. Foil blankets are great. Foil blankets are used to keep the casualty warm. Please note though, they are not used to warm a casualty up. If somebody's cold, you need to warm them up first before administering a foil blanket. And then this workplace I have chosen to have other PPE, such as face coverings, disposable aprons, and some goggles. You might also consider using a visor as well. Now other useful items that this workplace haven't put in their first aid kit, but you might consider putting into yours, will be things like safety pins, maybe sterile solution, little test tubes of water. And that's especially important if you have no running water available. You might also have tweezers that will be used to remove splinters, or even a leaflet or guidance on how to administer first aid. You might also want to have a pocket mask as well as a face shield. You might also want to have compression bandages for sprains. And you might just have the gauze swabs um, rather than the gauze attached to the bandage. So those are just a few extras you could consider putting in. Now, you should not have anything inside your first aid kit that is dangerous. And I normally class dangerous items as things that I call potions, lotions and sprays. Under potions, that would include things like paracetamol, ibuprofen, carpol. Under lotions, I wouldn't put any savlon and histamine cream. And no plaster spray, deep heat spray or um, ice spray. Because those things can cause someone to have an allergic reaction. And remember, we are the first aider, we are the first treatment. We can pass them over to somebody else who might advise these types of treatment, but we are a first aider in a workplace given the initial treatment to that casualty. So there shouldn't be anything in our first aid kit that is dangerous to somebody. So what I'd like you to do now is go away into your workplace and find your first aid kit. You know, do you know where it is? Is there enough in your workplace? Are they easily accessible? Who's responsible for filling them up? Who checks to make sure the contents haven't exceeded their expiry date? Just make sure you know where your workplace first aid kit is. So in an emergency, you can go and get it quickly. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to our channel and then the notification bell.